Hello, everybody. Thank you for tuning into my OE3C presentation. My name is Kevin McCall. I am a second year PhD student in the Maharali Lab at the University of Guelph. I am a plant slash soil ecologist, and I'm going to tell you all about my work on mycorrhizal fungi and agroecosystems. The name of my presentation is The Recovery of Our Buscular Mycorrhizal Fungal Communities in Agricultural Soils Restored with Prairie Grassland Plants. So um, understanding nutrient cycling through ecosystems is fundamental in plant ecology. Plants cycle the vast majority of nutrients through ecosystems, but actually most of these nutrients plants acquire from soils are not obtained through their roots. Rather, plants obtain most of their nutrients through mutualistic mycorrhizal fungi. Mycorrhizal fungi form extensive networks of hyphae that colonize both soils and plant roots. These hyphae act as channels, funneling nutrients from soils into plant roots. And in exchange for nutrients, plants provide mycorrhizal fungi with carbohydrates. Mycorrhizal fungal biomass can reach up to one ton of organic carbon per hectare of soil, and one gram of soil can contain tens of meters of hyphae. Uh, therefore, mycorrhizal fungi are widely researched among soil ecologists, given their abundance and the central role they play in nutrient cycling. The most common type are arbuscular mycorrhizal fungi, which I will, I will refer to as AM fungi. AM fungi form multifunctional communities composed of functionally different species. And by multifunctional, I mean AM fungi perform a variety of functions that benefit plants, including accessing different nutrient pools or performing additional services beyond nutrient delivery. These fungi can also protect plants from pathogens and increase plant drought resistance. But we're still trying to figure out the ecological importance of community composition in AM fungi. For example, we know that plants receive more benefits by being colonized by a variety of different species, possibly because functionally different AM fungal species specialize in different services. But there are still many unanswered questions about the importance of AM fungal diversity. I study how agriculture affects communities of AM fungi. As agriculture is by far the most widespread form of land usage in the world, there has been a lot of work trying to understand the impacts of agriculture on soil microbial communities. We know that agriculture reduces the abundance and species richness of AM fungi by a number of mechanisms. Uh, for instance, soil tillage breaks networks of hyphae, um, impacting the ability of the fungi to acquire nutrients and colonize plant roots. Um, chronic fertilization reduces the amounts of carbohydrates plants allocate below ground, which reduces AM fungal biomass. And monocropping uh, farm fields with single species of plants reduces the amount of potential hosts for the fungi. So agricultural AM fungi are reduced in biomass and tend to be dominated by disturbant tolerant species. And these species tend to be ones that invest highly in rapid reproduction. So the question is, um, can AM fungi recover? So let me introduce you to this concept of agricultural prairie restorations. It's become fairly common in North America to take agricultural fields out of production and plant them with tall grass prairies to promote ecological recovery. Since the year 1985, over 14 million hectares of farmland have been taken out of production and planted with prairie grasslands. And we know this is an effective method of ecosystem reclamation. In as little as 10 years, a prairie grass restoration project can double the abundance of soil microbial communities and the rate of carbon mineralization. And as um, prairie restorations can promote the return of insect species and native plant species. But to date, there have been very few studies that have focused on AM fungi. So the question is, um, do prairie restorations reverse the impacts of agriculture on AM fungal communities? There have only been a few studies on this topic, and these few studies have mostly only focused on the recovery of biomass. Um, prairie restorations can triple the biomass of AM fungi in soils in less than 10 years. But still, there's only been one study to my knowledge on the recovery of species. A study by Vanderheide et al., uh, published a couple years ago now, uh, these authors found gradual increases in species richness along a chrono sequence of restored prairies. But this study was restricted to the family uh, taxonomic level and these authors did not identify species that are present prior to restoration. So we still know very little about successional patterns in AM fungal recovery or whether they can recover at all. 
So um, AM fungi, they represent an important component in ecosystem functioning, but we still know little about how they recover from disturbance. And prairie restorations are becoming more and more common in Southern Ontario. So I thought it was important to conduct a study to answer three central questions. The first is, uh, do prairie restorations increase the biomass of AM fungi? Do prairie restorations increase the species richness of AM fungi? And I want to identify successional patterns, as in uh, which AM fungal species are first to return to the community and why. To answer these questions, I sampled five farm sites in southern Ontario. Each of these sites are currently being farmed, usually with corn. However, each of these farm sites also features a portion of farmland that has been taken out of production in the last 10 years and planted with prairie grasses. At each site, I sampled um, five random plots in the crop field and the restored prairies. I determined AM fungal biomass and species composition in crops and restored prairies. But the important point is that I'm comparing AM fungal communities in a direct side-by-side -side comparison between the crop and the restored prairie fields. So AM fungi in the crop fields can be considered sort of as a baseline, um, just the status of the community before recovery begins. And AM fungi in the restored prairies are currently undergo undergoing the process of recovery. Using these side-by-side -side comparisons, I can identify patterns in succession and get an idea of how recovery is occurring. At each of these five points, I sampled like this. I established two five meter transects intersecting, and I collected soil cores at one meter intervals along each transect and pooled those soil samples together. And I collected three randomly located plant samples um, to collect their roots. Samples were collected in this way to get a spatially representative sample. To determine the abundance and biomass of AM fungi, I extracted their spores from soils. AM fungi, they produce these large spores in the range of 100 to 300 micrometers in diameter. These spores can be extracted from soils fairly easily by a sucrose centrifugation method and uh, counted underneath a stereo microscope. So I estimated spore density in all of my soils. I used molecular methods for identifying AM fungal species. This is a fairly standard procedure. Soils are frozen at minus 80 degrees Celsius, ground and homogenized. We extracted DNA following the instructions on DNA isolation kits. We amplified a gene encoding the small, sub, small ribosomal subunit. This is the most commonly sequenced gene for identifying AM fungal species. It's considered the most accurate, and there are the largest databases based on the small ribosomal subunit. These genes were sequenced with Illumina sequencing, and we used the CHIME2 bioinformatics pipeline to clean our data and assign taxonomy to species. So on to some results. I found that AM fungi undergoing recovery in prairies had increased substantially in biomass in terms of spore density. Red boxes in this graph represent spore density in crop fields. Blue boxes represent spore density in the adjacent restored prairies. And each segment of the graph represents one farm site. And there's this clear trend of spore recovery at each farm site. Usually spore density tripled in soils in AM fungi undergoing recovery compared to the directly adjacent crop field. And it's a similar situation with species richness. Again, these are side-by-side -side comparisons of restored prairies to crop fields. Uh, and the y-axis represents the number of species identified in each, so in each type of soil. Again, mean species richness usually tripled in AM fungal communities undergoing recovery compared with the adjacent crop field. On the left or on the right is a heat map. Um, columns represent sample plots in prairies and crops. Rows represent AM fungal species, and cells represent the abundance of species and plots. Uh, this is just from a preliminary analysis. Actually, the computer I run bioinformatics on is currently off limits due to the university closure. But uh, still, this heat map gives a sort of a crude visualization of the increase in of diversity in AM fungal communities in crops compared to crop fields compared to restored prairies. And again, I'd like to show you just some very preliminary visual findings of patterns of succession. These are the proportional, uh, proportional abundances of the most commonly observed AM fungal genera in crop and prairie communities in terms of um, the number of gene sequences detected in our soil samples for each genera. Um, so first, this is an important genus of AM fungi called Glomus. Glomus are these um, sort of disturbance-tolerant species. 
I talked about earlier. Um, they're believed to resist disturbance through high investment and copious reproduction so they can recover quickly from disturbance events. And not surprisingly, glomus were dominant in agricultural plots, in some cases comprising almost 100% of the species. But as communities are recovering, uh, glomus seems to be reducing in proportional abundance in the community, usually declining by 5 or 10% as new species are recovered into the community. Some of these new species that are recovering seem to be in these two uh, genera, Chloroideoglomus and Diversospora. As communities are recovering, it seems species in these two genera are the first to return to the community, especially, especially this genera, Chloroideoglomus, which usually increase in abundance by 10 to 20%. And um, I want to show you this because I think it's interesting because this is sort of a new discovery. These two genera aren't typically associated with early succession. I've never seen this reported before, um, even though it's pretty consistent across farm sites. So I thought it was an interesting point to bring up. The ecological, sig ecological significance of these two genera are unclear right now, uh, as in why are these um, genera returning to the community first? Why are they early su successional species? So um, this is something I hope to follow up in greenhouse studies, uh, testing differences in species responses to excessive fertilization. So in conclusion, I set out to conduct a study on AM fungi in restored agricultural prairies, which there have been a very few studies on previously. I want to know if prairie restorations increased AM fungal biomass, AM fungal species richness, and I want to identify which species are being recovered into the community. And the answers are, yes, there were substantial increases in AM fungal biomass and species richness. I observed that the disturbance-tolerant glomus species were dominant in crop fields, but were reduced as communities were recovering. And I discovered two new genera, Chloroideoglomus and Diversospora. They showed an early su successional pattern. Um, these genera seem to increase in abundance consistently across farm sites. So thank you for listening. I'd like to acknowledge all of my funding sources, including NSERC and the terrific CEFREF and Food from Thought grants, which have made all of this possible, um, the land managers that have graciously let me sample in their prairies, and all of my lab mates that have helped me with my project so far. Thank you again.